Good morning, Himalayas. Got up this morning, pretty sore from the hike yesterday, but I get to see the nice Himalaya mountains with the sunrise. Looks to be good weather. So this mountain's pretty close to where we're at, here at this uh, stopover point. This is the place where we stayed at, and it's pretty picturesque everywhere. Hey, good morning, Hunter. Good morning. I just spent all morning crying. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay. So, <laughs> it's beautiful up here. That's nice. So if you wanted to get your parents up here, what would you have to do? You'd have to build some sort of cart, because they have, you know, they're older. Yeah. And like get two people to, you know, carry them, like, you know, a, a human carriage sort of thing. Uh -huh. You just sherpa, sherpa them up the hill. I think you could do it pretty easily. I mean, they're carrying 300 pound bags of grain. Like, they could carry my 100, like my 90 pound mom <laughs> up a hill. It wouldn't be too bad. Uh, but we haven't seen that yet. No, no. Uh, yeah. I wonder what's the oldest person that's hiked this trail. Oh man. 70s or 80s? Probably over. We saw a guy hiking the trail yesterday that had to be over 100 years old. Oh, really? Yeah, he was, he was, he was a sherpa. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, okay. Huh. It's real. Wait, what is that? That's what gotta that? be just a big bag of styrofoam <laughs> peanuts. There's no way that's real. Plastic recycling, possibly. What do you rather have? Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, about four hours to Dengueche. I can't believe we woke up, or I woke up this morning and I had no idea that was Everest. That's why uh, you were crying. That's why I was crying, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> I just came out here and I was bawling for no reason, then I found out there was actually a good reason. <laughs> so it's real. So it is real, the stories are true. <laughs> <laughs> it does happen, apparently. It's so, the magnitude of that thing is just, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah. Do you like heading back up? I want to wash my feet next. Oh, that's a really good idea. I don't have a towel for my feet, so I'm going to take care of it From Alaska? Oh, with the helicopter? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Thanks. So incredible, huh? That is incredible, man. I mean, these, they're so old that the rain has actually eroded the symbols on them. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Hunter. Imagine if you lived down there, you're a little kid, and you're going to school, and it's school five minutes that way. And you had to commute every single morning to school from down there, all the way up there. Can you imagine that? At the base of some massive glacier that's just about to fall on you at any second. <laughs> what do you think you found here? I'm looking for a few different things right now. Um, Lapis, Asmaline, I think. Teddy? No, no, no. no, no I'm kidding. Uh, but the the skulls that are in the monasteries yeah. in Pangboche yeah. and Kumjo. Kumjo. You can did, see? Did someone kill those? No, no, no. They it's just right. naturally died? They naturally died. And yeah. then the people found them? Yeah. And then they took the skull and. Yeah. They put it there. They I see. Yeah. Not the kid. No. So, but natural is to die. Yeah, but yeah. normally you wouldn't want to kill them, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're sacred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's good. 
I like to eat it, but I can't see. Yeah. yeah. No. It's scary. Yeah. It's maybe uh, ten, like this tall, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very tall. It's very tall. The most sightings that you've seen yeah. were in the 50s, 1950, 1960, in that yeah. time. Yeah. But I'm sure they were many, 300 years ago, yeah. there was more. Oh. Yeah. We're uh, Alaska. Alaska. Oh. Yeah, way north. <laughs> but it's really a... Uh... But you would need to find a uh, porter to take his gear to. Yeah, we'd need too. to find somebody to take our bags down yeah. so that we can... Uh, so it's just from the top down, right? Uh, porter neat? Oh, uh, no. If we do the marathon. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay with porters. No problem. Yeah. If you run. Fine. How yeah. much do porters cost? I don't know. Yeah, they maybe. change. They're always different. Yeah. Uh, thousand dollar maybe. What? Uh, thousand dollar entry fee maybe. Oh, uh, thousand dollar entry yeah. fee. That makes sense. <laughs> For the race, the marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand dollars. Yeah. Maybe. <sighs> oh. <laughs> What's that? Okay. Uh, Ringo, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay, see you. What the heck? Look at that cat. Just jogging along like it's nothing. My fingernails are like turning purple right now, and he's just sprinting along like it's absolutely. It's just a park for him. <laughs> Fingertips. It's crazy. Let's, let's keep going. Ugh. Well, I'm walking ahead right now, trying to get to this place called Peroche. We're gonna spend the night, but it's another two hours. It's been taking a while. We do a lot of hiking every day. This is the scenery. What are those down there? Down there? Yeah. Well, my friend, that's a traditional Nepalese yakari. They go through and they they brew up the best yaks in all the land. Mm. I'd be up to my tits and yaks in no time if I had a thing like that. How's your altitude feeling? Oh man, I am definitely feeling it. I'm not sick, but I'm wildly out of my mind. I'm lightheaded and it feels great. He's, he's got some going on. <laughs> he's got some stuff going on. Yeah, it's... I dropped my camera. Whoa. Well, here we have Peroche. It took me three days to get here from Lukla. It takes a long time to get around these places because you gotta walk and hike all this distance. There's no roads around here. So the only means of transportation is purely walking, like this lady is doing. So you'll be picking and then like, uh, there'll be a hole in the stones and they'll just swim out and like this big eel will just and like wrap it so, oh, it's so scary. Yeah. <sighs> but, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I have fun doing at home. <laughs> but when I'm not doing that, I, I sit on the couch. Yeah. And I, I, I leave. <laughs> <laughs> or I come here. <laughs> I come to Nepal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so much fun. Go, yeah. So this is the room you get. It has two beds, two twin beds. 
All right, we made it to Mount Kailash Lodge and Restaurant here at Perochi. <laughs> 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 this is by far the best one we've been to yet. Yeah, it's getting better as we go, huh? Yeah, actually. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> you got a shop here. Yeah, like, Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, this is this is definitely a spot if you're gonna come to. Uh, we're in a. Where are we right now? Perochi. Perochi, yeah. If you're gonna come to Perosha, this is the spot. It's at the very end of the trail if you're coming from uh, Tenguche. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's the right place. Mm, okay. Yeah. What are we gonna do next? I don't know, let's get some tea. Do you want some tea? Tea, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. okay. Right away. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first things first. Yeah, yeah. Right. I know. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> Hey Hunter, what's buff fried rice? I believe it's a male yak, yes? A buffalo, is a, it's a yak, it's a buffalo, buff a yak, yak a buff. <laughs> Mostly. <laughs> It's mostly a male yak, and then with what? What was it? Buff fried rice. Uh, it's fried rice and yeah, male yak. Oh, okay. And then how about Momo? Momo is uh, they're like these little dumplings, I guess, or something yeah. like that. But they're about this big. I haven't had them yet. I okay. was described them to by somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get the get like uh, probably like curry vegetables and rice and there's like some kimchi stuff they make that's really good. Okay, and then the pizza here, what kind of cheese do they use? They use yak cheese, everything's okay. it's yak, milk, yak cheese. We're in Nepal, man! They don't have cows here! They have yaks! <laughs> and there's a garlic steak, what's that? I'm guessing they fillet the garlic out super thick and then they charbroil it. Same with the onion steak? Most likely. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. What about chips chili? Chips chili? You take chili and you what you do is you grind it into a paste and you dry it. And you crack it up and you cut it into little tiny triangles about like that. And you make them into, you dehydrate them and make them chips. What about buff chili? Oh, that's tough. What you have to do is you have to actually figure out where a yak will be cold enough to be called chili. You gotta take the yak out to the summit and it gets chilly. I believe, but I'm not sure. Mm, okay. I can go for days. Thanks, Flix. Thanks for explaining <laughs> this menu. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> We're going. We're gonna get that. <laughs> Was it three years ago with Hunter? Yeah, we did two or three years ago. They went for vacation to Iraq. Uh -huh. yeah. Wow. That's a big pot, Hunter. Oh man, I love pot. I mean... Don't say that to my mother. Like, Check out how big my is. I'm sorry, but like... <laughs> no, but it's like the shepherds, the, the local guys, they need to do it for a living, you know? Yeah, no, but the, but I the, totally get that. But the, like, the visitors, the climbers who come as guests, they don't have to do it for a living, you know? No, they don't have to do it. But they do it. You know? It's almost forcing people to do it that live here. I was, I was talking about that earlier. It's like, it's kind of putting people in a bad position. It's like, well, we have to take you up there because you'll, we'll, you'll just have a pile of dead bodies at the top of this mountain. We'll have to go exactly. up and get and leave. Like, it's a whole different game, you know, to, be, to, to walk on that mountain and see people dying or dead bodies and to feel still okay and just go for yeah, moving she, forward. It's just a whole, like, shit set of mind, you know? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Like, how can you do that? Exactly. That's why I never want to climb this. I'd rather go climb smaller peaks, you know? Yeah. Climbed a few, say, 6,000. There's definitely a, like an enjoyment factor in climbing. Like, I'm, really, I'm really liking being up here. Exactly. But I'm not dying. I mean, like, this is, like, I might have altitude sickness tomorrow, but it's not going to be like, oh, my, half my face fell off. Like, <laughs> like oops. <laughs> I stuck my head out of the tent too soon, and now I don't have a nose. So, like, <laughs> it's not comfortable anymore, you know? Well, you just go there to see the worst of yourself, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I think three people died today, four people died yesterday. 
and the day before somebody got blown up from the top with the wind. Jesus Christ. And these stories don't go with newspaper, right? They do, but it takes a while. You know? yeah. The radio tries to report it, but then it doesn't come so quick because the message has hear, to go. Where did you hear this information? I hear, heard from my shepherd friends who came back okay. after the summit. Yeah. So there was that was just his last trip. Yeah. Yeah. Seven people died. Yeah. That's insane. No, 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 total, no, total, the total count is not seven. I think the total count is quite high, like, I don't know, 14, 15 or something like this. How many people went out? Yeah. This year, uh, total quite a lot. I think, I think there's like more than 400 people who went for the push. Uh, and then they just, these people got stuck. In the, yeah, a lot of them died of frostbite and altitude sickness. And some people just fell off stuff, you know. That's probably why we saw those people coming down that were summer house. Mm. Some of them had white lips. All of them had. Some of them had no lips. I'm sure some of them, uh, like all, some of them had everything you could ever imagine of, like the worst that could happen to you. You know, some of them lost their eyes because they got complete snow, snow blindness, and all yeah. you see is just red. You know. Yeah. That's so, insane. So at least fifteen of them. Fifteen this year. I think so. And two of them today? Three today, I think. Three today. They died in their tents. Uh -huh. so they, they, and they just went to sleep and never woke up. Was it just too cold? I think so. I don't On know. the way down? On the way down, yeah. And they're all taking, they have all on oxygen, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, how do they even get bottles of oxygen, like that much oxygen up the mountain? You just carry them up. But like, you know, you must do two or three a day, right? Bottles? Yeah. And yeah. like, you just gotta go back and forth every single day? No, the shippers bring them up. That sucks. Yeah. Why would you do that? <laughs> you just stop bringing the bottles, people will stop going. <laughs> it's kind of like a baby when it starts crying, you know, get the bottle. Yeah. It throws it on the ground, you stop giving it the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts out there. Yeah, it's crazy. And I didn't, yeah, I had no idea it was like that. Yeah. Still, people just keep pushing. And like after camp three, you're like, so tired, so that you can't sleep at all, of course, but you're so tired. Yeah. You feel like sleeping every second. If but you, you sleep, can't. If you sleep, you're not going to wake up. So it was just like, go for the push, you know? Yeah. They're just going, going, yeah. going. You'd be afraid you wouldn't awake. Exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't go to sleep if I was worried about not waking up. Cool. Yeah. Hmm.